वेलकम बैक चिल्ड्रेन हिस्ट्री चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स वीवर्स एंड स्मेल्टर्स एंड फैक्ट्री ओनर्स इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडस्ट्रीज ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ ब्रिटिश रूल दैट इज टेक्सटाइल एंड एंड स्टील टेक्सटाइल एंड एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्रीज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोग्रेस इन द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड Britain started to be known as the industrial nation due to the presence of mechanized cotton production. In 1850s, it came to be known as the workshop of the world because iron and steel industry started growing in Britain during this period. This industrialization in Britain was closely connected with the colonization of India. As we have already seen this in chapter number 2. that how east india company became master of our land because it wanted to trade in our country for the sake of profit in the late 18th century britain was just procuring goods from india for selling them in europe to earn profits out of the sale of this goods as the industrial production increase in britain now india was seen as the market for its products and the british started flooding the indian markets with their goods how this inflow of goods affected our industry and market will be discussed in this chapter first of all we must know about the textile market and its demands in the world indian textiles and the world market before the british conquest over bengal india was the world largest producer of cotton textile The Indian cotton textile was famous for both its finest quality and the exquisite craftsmanship. Indian textiles were traded in Southeast Asia and West and Central Asia. In 16th century, various European companies started purchasing Indian textiles for sale in Europe. For example, Patola weave was woven in Surat, Ahmedabad and Patan. and this type of weave was famous in indonesia so it was highly valued there even many word related to the indian words which were used for various types of textile are still prevalent in english and other languages such words tell us about our history so let's see words tells us history the fine cotton cloth which was first seen by the european trader was the one which was carried by the arab traders in um, mosul a city in present day iraq so they started referring it as muslin cloth this word earned them a lot of money when the portuguese came to india for procuring spices they landed at calicut the textile which they took back to europe came to be known as calico name after the place from where it was purchased that is calicut there were many words which show the popularity of indian textile in the western world in 1730 the east india company used to send order details to its representatives in calcutta for placing demand for textile pieces piece here means a cloth which was 20 yards long and yard wide that is one The orders were generally placed two years in advance, as it was the time required to send orders to India. So, if we take a look at the different varieties of clothes, there was chintz, kosas, and bandanas. All these words are derived from Hindi words. Chintz is basically chint, a piece of cloth with flower design. from 1618s the floral designs become so famous in england and europe that the rich people even the queen herself started wearing this indian fabric just like this bandana today we call it a bandhani is derived from the word bandana which is colored printed scarf for the neck and head it is basically a color cloth produced through a method by tying and dyeing Many other fabrics came to be known from the place of origin such as Kasim Bazar, Patna, Calicut, Orissa, Charpore, etc. This uh, 
shows the popularity of Indian textile in other parts of the world. Indian textiles in European market. During the early 18th century, as the demand for Indian textile grew in England, the wool and silk makers started protesting against the import of textile from India. So, in 1720, an act known as the Calico Act was made in order to ban the use of printed cotton tin textile. At this time, the textile industry of England was at its uh, budding state, that is, it was in peak state. At it was difficult to compete with the Indian textile. English producers wanted to safeguard their market from the Indian textiles. Hence, the calico printing industry grew under the protection of the government. They used to copy the Indian printed design on white muslin or plain Indian cloth. In this competition led to introduction of technology in England. In 1764, the spinning jenny was invented by John Kay. It was a spinning machine that would operate several spindles in single rotation. This increased the production of textile industry and with the invention of steam engine by Richard Arkwright in 1786, a revolution was experienced in cotton textile weaving. Now weaving cotton became speedy and cheaper also. However, Indian textile was still dominating the market till the end of the 18th century. Many European companies such as the English, the Dutch and the French earned a handsome profit out of this. These companies purchased cotton and silk by importing silver from their native countries. But soon after acquiring Diwani over Bengal, the East India Company started collecting enough revenue to finance their trade purposes and stopped importing silver from England. So now a question arises as to where were the major centers of Vivek in the late 18th century. So the major centers of Vivek in the late 18th century were at Lahore and Sarin in Punjab, Ahmedabad and Surat in Gujarat, Banaras in UP, Patna in Bihar, Madras and Pondicherry in Tamil Nadu etc. Now that we know about the Indian textile and its huge demand in the world, we should also know who used to make this finest textile. So who were the weavers? Weavers generally belonged to the communities that had the quality of fine weaving. Their skills were carried on by the next generations. There are so many names for the weavers in different parts of India like Tanti in Bengal, Julahas or Momin of North India, Sale, Kailoka and Devangs of South India. For weaving, first spinning was done by the woman. In this task, Charkha or Takli were used. The thread was spun on the Charkhas and then rolled on the Takli. In most of the communities, weaving was done by man. Rangres used to dye the thread to make colored textile and chipigas were the block printers specialists to make print cloth. Now let's discuss how our textile industry came to a decline, the decline of textile industry. The growth and development of British industry affected Indian textiles producers in several ways such as there was a tough competition between Indian textile and British textiles in American and European market. Britain had imposed heavy import duty on Indian textiles. In the beginning of 19th century, Britishers gained control over African, American and uh, European markets. The demand of Indian goods reduced, resulting in big loss for the Indian weavers. The Indian weavers were badly hit by the unemployment English and European companies stopped buying Indian goods and their agents were not providing advance to secure supplies. Finally, the weavers had to write petitions to the government to help them. The situation got worse when in 1830s British cotton overtook the Indian market as there were huge inflow of the cotton from Britain. Not only this, 
by 1880s two third of cotton clothes which were worn by the indians were made of cotton which was imported from britain this made many indian weavers and spinners jobless however handloom weaving still exists for some reasons like some clothes were not supplied by the machines for example sarees were intricate borders or cloth with traditional woven patterns were not manufactured by machines coarse cloth coarse children here is a loose or rough cloth in texture used by the poor was not produced by the british textile solapur in western india and madurai of south india became important centers of weaving in the late 19th century even mahatma gandhi during the national movement urged people to boycott english textile and use hand woven khadi this later on became a symbol of nationalism due to which the charkha was put on the flag of indian national congress in 1931 weavers and spinners who became jobless finally choose other job option for example some became farmers or left for africa and south america in search of work or many went to bombay ahmedabad solapur nagpur and kanpur to work in cotton mills cotton mills come up the first cotton mill in india was set up at bombay in 1854 bombay from the early 19th century grew as an important port for the export of raw cotton from india to england and china it was also close to western india which had black soil fit for the growth of cotton so it was easy for them to procure raw material from nearby places by 1900 there were over 84 mills which were operating in bombay and most of them were established by the parsis or gujaratis the cotton mills were present in other cities also for example the first mill at ahmedabad was started in 1861 and a mill in kanpur was also established after that many poor peasants artisans and agricultural laborers moved to the cities to work in the mills in the initial years indian textile industry faced many problems as there was tough competition from the foreign textile industry The support which Indian textile industry first received from the Britishers was during the First World War when they received the order to produce cloth for military. The sword of Tipu Sultan and Wood Steel. The story of Indian steel should begin with the famous story of Tipu Sultan who was king of Mysore till 1799. He fought four wars against the British with the legendary sword. This sword is now displayed in a museum in England. The specialty of the sword was that it was made of high carbon steel known as wood that could easily rip the enemy's armor. Wood is produced in South India. Swords made up of steel had a sharp edge with a flowing water pattern. The pattern was due to the very small carbon crystal embedded in the iron. Francis a uh, butchanan gave an account on how this wood was produced in many hundreds of smelting furnaces in mysore according to him iron was mixed with charcoal and put inside small clay pots keeping integrate integrate means very complicated or detailed control of temperature the smelter produced the steel uh, rings Uh, that were used for swords making not just in india but in western central asia too woods is an anglicized version of the kannada word uku telugu huku and tamil word uruku which all mean steel many european scientists were fascinated with the indian steel woods Michael Faraday spent 4 years in studying the properties of uh, woods but soon the process of making wood steel declined because the sword and armor making industry died as India was taken over by the various European powers the iron and steel from England displaced the iron and steel produced by the craftsmen of uh, India abandoned furnaces in villages 
What is chiltern furnace is that is an enclosed structure in which your material can be heated to at a very high temperature. For example, for smelting metals. Although there were furnaces present in every village, especially in Bihar and Central India, because it was easy to produce, procure the raw material from the nearby ores, and generally the work of smelting was done by both man and woman. But by the late 19th century, the craft of iron smelting started declining. One of the reasons behind this was the new forest laws, which prevented the people from entering the reserve forest from where they could get their raw material. Entry was allowed in some forests, but the smelters were charged with heavy taxes. This increased their expenses and reduced their income. Moreover, with the availability of British steel in India, the industry started using the imported steel for making utensils and other things. Iron and steel factories. In 1904, an American zoologist Charles Weld and Dorabji Tata, the eldest son of Jamjitsi Tata, saw Agaria tribe people who were carrying baskets, uh, loads of iron ore from a hill. They were the Rajhara hills. Though it was one of the finest ores, but it was difficult to set up a steel plant there because of the non availability of uh, water. So finally, a place with the help of agarias was found and a plant known as Belai steel plant was set up there. After a few years, a large forest area was cleared off on the bank of the river Subanarekha and a factory was set up with an industrial township known as Jamshedpur. The Tata Iron and Steel uh, Company started producing steel here in 1912. Though in the initial years of the company, the Britishers were not purchasing steel from it as they preferred British steel and were not sure about the quality of the Indian steel. But during the First World War, to meet the needs of Indian railways, steel of Tesco came into demand. Just like cotton and iron and steel also expanded when British imports declined in India and the market for industrial goods increased. This occurred during the First World War. This also happened due to the development of both nationalist movement and also the growing demand of government protection. British government had to concede many demands in order to retain its rule over India. Thank you.